Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is session W07, Collaborative Town Projects. Uh, it's Wednesday, July 30th, uh, 315. And our speaker is E. Randall, Randy Schoenberg. Uh, before we start, a couple of announcements. Uh, as always, please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Uh, Randy has asked that you hold all your questions until the end. Um, if anybody needs to leave the room while the session is going on, uh, please hold the door and be quiet um, so we won't interrupt our recording. And today we have both an audio and a video recording. So without further ado, um, let me tell you a little bit about Randy. Um, Randy is, a, before I start, actually Randy reminded me, there is a URL here, uh, tinyurl.com backslash LG8NCCE, LG8NCCE, and that URL contains the slides that Randy is going to be discussing. Uh, Randy is a board member of Jewish Gen and is the co-founder of Jewish Gen's Austria-Czech Special Interest Group. He moderates the Austria-Czech mailing list and website and is also the author of The Beginner's Guide to Austrian Jewish Genealogy and the co-author of Getting Started with Czech Jewish Genealogy. Schoenberg is a volunteer curator on Genie.com and is one of Genie's most active users, managing over 100,000 profiles. Professionally, he is an attorney and serves on the boards of various philanthropic, artistic, and educational organizations. He presently serves as president of the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust. Uh, I give you Randy Schoenberg. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah. Is my mic on? There we go. Hello, everyone. Hello, TV audience. Uh, okay, welcome to Collaborative Town Projects. I'm really very happy uh, to have been asked to give this talk here at the conference. It's a subject that I've long wanted to speak about, um, and I think you'll see why. I'm very passionate about the idea. This is, in my view, the number one advance in genealogy in the past several years and is really going to open up uh, a lot of avenues for everybody in the field once we get uh, enough people involved in it. Okay, so first a little background. Uh, here's a picture of me, not yet 11 years old, in August 1977, showing off my family tree, uh, which I had done. And I, I think it's, it's sort of cute, but also interesting, uh, because I think this is how a lot of us start off. Um, you see me over here, uh, should I use the left one here? Um, you see me here pointing to myself, of course. Um, you can't tell, but it's written in giant red block letters, as are all of my ancestors. Whereas my siblings, who made fun of me forever after, uh, are in darker, smaller letters, as are all the uncles and aunts and cousins, right? So I was concerned mainly with myself and my ancestors and secondarily with everybody else. Uh, second interesting thing is that you can see here that I'm already interested in publishing my research, right, here at age 10. This is a way to show the world the work that I had done, piecing together all this information on both sides of my family. You can only see about uh, three-fifths of the whole thing. It was 12 feet long, this tree that I did. And I think the third interesting thing, looking back on 1977, is already I was aware of the difficulties that we have in producing a, a family tree that actually shows the entire tree. Uh, so you can see these cards up here. What I had discovered, of course, is if you build a tree like this and you go up, it's fine on the outsides. You can go up and down. But you can't go off of any of these interior branches and go back down. So on each one of these, there's sort of an end point and a little number, and it went up to these what I called extension cards. So already at 10 years old, I'm interested in genealogy. I'm interested primarily in my genealogy. I'm interested in publishing my genealogy, and I'm aware that there's some difficulties in how to do that. And really, genealogy for me has been a lifelong pursuit since I was, even before this, uh, eight years old. And I've never stopped working on my genealogy. Uh, if you fast forward about 20 years from this uh, into the 1990s, 
That's when, using computers, we were all able to take our work that had previously just been on paper like this and computerize it. And I, I think the first attempt I made at this was uh, with an early version of Reunion for Macintosh. It was maybe Reunion 2.0 or something like that. Uh, and I typed in all of the information that I had found and put that on Reunion. Uh, around the same time, in the early uh, 90s, people were using Usenet news groups, and uh, Jewish Gen started uh, becoming more popular. And so I started being in touch with other genealogists and learning that there was a, a larger world of genealogy out there. I attended, actually, a, uh, my first conference of the IAJGS when it was in Los Angeles. In the 1990s, it happened to be across the street from my law office, and so I went. Didn't do much more than attend the the uh, uh, meeting where we plotted the creation of the Austria Czech Special Interest Group. At that time, there was a Greater Germany group and there was a Greater Hungary group, and they were sort of refighting World War One, and and Austria had been sort of obliterated, and so we carved ourselves out, the Austrians and Czechs, and made the Austria-Czech Special Interest Group. And I, as one of the younger members, was then uh, given the task of helping to create that, moderate it, bring people together, find people, and put them together, and now our group is, is a pretty large one on Jewish Gen. We have, I think, something like 1,400 members. So uh, that's some of my background. In 2009, I believe, I, uh, 2008, sorry, 2008, I was invited to be the keynote speaker at the IAJGS conference in Chicago. I had just two years earlier won this big case involving the Klimt paintings, and so I was asked to give uh, the keynote speech about that. And I had not been to a conference other than just attending a brief meeting at the prior one, so I w really didn't know everybody and I didn't know what it was about, and I gave, gave my speech. And I walked into the exhibitor hall, and there was a booth for a company I had never heard of before called Genie.com. Genie and I talked to the person at the, at the desk, and I picked up a card, and like I did with a lot of things at the conference, and I brought it home. But over that, the next few months, through the fall and winter of 2008, I started thinking about what am I going to do with my family tree. I had, as I told you, I put it on Reunion. I had used a feature in Reunion to create a web version of my family tree. They were called Web Family Cards, and I had uploaded these to, uh, I think it was RootsWeb, had, had uh, the ability where you could just upload masses of information. So I had a whole tree on the, on the net, but I was dissatisfied with this. Uh, and why was I dissatisfied? Well, one was I kept getting emails from people who said, oh, there's a mistake here, or how did you get this? You stole my information, or I don't want to be on this tree. How come I'm on your, your tree? That type of thing. And I, by now, my tree had been pretty large. It was about 50,000 people. Uh, only a small portion of that was mine. Uh, most of it I had taken from a guy named David Solomon who had put together this enormous sort of rabbinic tree and the part of that that I was connected to was added to it. Uh, but I, I was inundated with these messages of people contacting me about branches of my family that I didn't know anything about and didn't necessarily feel like I should be responsible for. Uh, and so I was looking at the possibility of finding another platform. And so in February 2009, I very naively uploaded my GEDCOM file to Genie. Uh, I actually did it twice because I didn't think it worked the first time, and that caused a lot of problems later on. Um, and, uh, but beginning then in February 2009, I got to know Genie. It took a while. There's a learning curve. Uh, and eventually, a few years later, I became uh, one of the initial curators on Genie. So there are about 100, 125 people, users, that Genie has allowed to be curators to help other people. We are given sort of superpowers to, uh, to go around and fix mistakes and lock things down if they're problems. Anyway, so now I'm a curator on Genie, and for those of you who know me, or, in, or even if you don't, I'm, I'm very much an advocate of it, maybe even an addict uh, of Genie. It's where I publish my research. So I started in 1977 publishing like this. Now I do it on Genie, and I do it collaboratively with other people. And so that's what's led to this speech today. Um, so I'm going to talk initially about what I see are the problems that many of us face, the opportunities that exist now, and then the solution to those problems, which I think, I think you're, you can see already where I'm heading. 
Okay, so here are some of the problems that we have with genealogy, right? We want to make connections to other family members, learn about our ancestors and how they lived, but sometimes we just don't know how. We don't know how to find them. We can't reach them. Uh, we have brick walls, right? Those are the, the places where, gosh, I wish I knew where he was from, or I knew, wish I knew who his wife was, that type of thing. Uh, we also have a lot of sources now. It used to be I had to go to the Family History Library in Los Angeles and order microfilm and go like this for hours. Now I can do it from, from my room at home, and I can, uh, or even on the road, and I can access records all over the place. So we have all these different sources, but there are not enough hours in the day to go through all of them. We don't have enough time to really do all the research that we want. Uh, sometimes there's too much information, right? And we, don't, we can't really get through it all. Um, let's say you re you're related to one of these large rabbinic families with, where it's already been plotted out, 60,000 uh, descendants, right? And how are you going to enter that all in on your little family tree maker program, that type of thing. Uh, there are language barriers. Right? When you do genealogy, you need to know 120 different languages, but none of us do. So even though I'm really good at, at German, I'm good you know, at, at uh, English, I even do a little French, but my family's in areas in the Czech Republic and in Hungary, and there are things in Hungarian and Latin and Czech, and I need help sometimes, right? Uh, it's sometimes hard to decipher the records, even if you had and I only had two years of German, but if you had six years of German, you could come out not knowing how to read the old German script from 1820, uh, the little handwriting chicken scratch that they use. Uh, well, I shouldn't call it chicken scratch. It's probably better than the way I write. Um, and then uh, we have the problem there's no one to help sometimes, right? That you feel sort of you can't go further because you don't know who to ask. You don't have anybody to help you. And I should add there's one other problem that some people who come to these conferences have, which is, I'm the world's expert, and I can't get all the people to, to do what I want them to do. Okay? That's another problem that genealogists have. Right? They know their field, and they have all this information, and if only everybody else would just sort of circle around them and follow them, the world would be perfect. Um, that's another problem that genealogists have. Okay, so what are the opportunities today? We have more access to more materials than ever before in the history of genealogy. I mean, you know, you think of the people trying to put together these old genealogies in the 19th century, the early 20th century, they had nothing to work with. We've got everything. Uh, and you can find a lot of it on Jewish Gen, you can find a lot on Family Search, on Ancestry, on MyHeritage. There's just endless resources, new ones being discovered uh, almost every week. We also have connections to other researchers around the world. Through Jewish Gen's special interest groups and the mailing lists, we actually know a lot of the people. Right? We used to work in our little silos at home, and now we know people in Melbourne and Israel right, and Gdansk, everywhere, who are working in our field. Um, and finally, we have collaborative platforms like Genie. Now, Genie is not the only collaborative platform. I think it's the best, but it's not the only one. There is Wikitree and We Relate, uh, which, are, which are somewhat like Genie, but much smaller. Um, uh, I can show you a little bit. Well, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go two slides on. We'll talk a little bit more, more about Genie. Um, Ancestry and MyHeritage also have collaborative trees. They're not searchable on the web, and they're sort of moderated by one person. So you can have your, your Schoenberg family tree on MyHeritage. I do. I have one on, on Ancestry also, and you can invite certain people to join that tree, but it's your tree. Uh, and, and so it, those generally stay in a smaller range because other people don't want to put other sides of their family on your tree. Uh, so Genie is one that's a little bit different. I think, are we, did I go? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so how do we find out about our ancestral towns? Uh, I'm going to go through, through that first before I talk about the, the platform. Uh, there, there are a number of really good sources these days. Uh, one is Jewish Gen's Kahila links. Susanna Leisner Bloch uh, administers these, and I, I just put the, the sort of front page on it so you can see how it's organized. But here, volunteers come and they offer they author web pages, and the web pages are filled with interesting information about a particular town, everything that can be collected. So it'll have a description, it'll have sometimes documents 
lists of people, perhaps, descriptions of other, uh, other sources, lots of material. So it's a great way of learning about a particular town. Uh, we have also on Jewish Gen the Yiskor book uh, database, which Lance Ack Ackerfeld is the, is the administrator of, very similar to Kihila links, uh, uh, but this focuses on Yiskor books, were, which were written uh, after World War II about the deceased members of various towns and villages. It's a really great resource on Jewish Gen for discovering information about your town. This is one from Rohatan, I just use it as an example. Um, then you have uh, something called the Jewish Virtual Library. They have great descriptions of almost every old town and village uh, done really very, very professionally and very well. Uh, and then for some areas, there will even be special interest group uh, groups on Facebook. This is uh, Marla Rauker Osborne, who has, has her, her Rohatan genealogy group on Facebook. It's a good way of finding out what's going on in Rohatan genealogy, and there are various of the, a number of these. But where are the family trees? You will not find them. You will not find a family tree on any of these town uh, sources. Uh, so for those of us who like to do genealogy, not just town history, where do we go, right? We have to go somewhere else. And that is, I think, the crux of the problem. Uh, we need a place to combine town information with our family trees, because they do go together. Uh, most platforms cannot link town information individual trees. Jewish Gen has family tree of the Jewish people. It, has, it, it is just a standard, very old format, cannot be linked with town information. Um, Ancestry and MyHeritage have also their own family tree set up, but it cannot be linked and tied together in town information. Same if you have your family tree on your home computer on Family Tree Maker or Reunion, you cannot connect with other people and work on town information. So this is, these are not good platforms for collaboration. But you can do all of this on Genie, which is really why I like Genie. So Genie is really the home uh, for collaborative genealogy. It is the best platform in my view. Genie users from around the world work together to build a single comprehensive family tree of all humanity. Okay? Now you can build private trees, uh, there, is, there is privacy at certain levels, but the goal of Genie is a public world family tree. Uh, it's easy to build a family tree on Genie, it's easy to start a project, um, and it has all of these different features. The World Family Tree on Genie currently has over 78 million connected profiles. Each profile is an individual. Uh, and there are not a lot of duplicates because the idea on Genie is that there shouldn't be any duplicates, that each person has just one profile. So when you find duplicates, you merge them together. That's how the tree got so big. Uh, if I can explain it to you, imagine like when it rains, you have little drops everywhere, and then they form little puddles, and the puddles move together like little ponds, and then they become a big lake. Okay? So on Genie, there's a big lake, the world family tree, which 78 million profiles. There's still a lot of isolated trees around it, but the main activity is in this, in this central world family tree. Um, it now has, as I said, 78 million profiles with three million users attached to it. So this is three million people working on one tree. I, I like to describe it like a jigsaw puzzle. Imagine the family tree of the world is like a giant jigsaw puzzle with all the puzzles in disarray, all the pieces are in disarray, right? And all of us genealogists are going there and putting together the pieces, putting in the pieces. So there are three million people working on one puzzle. So, let me tell you about Genie projects, because this is an aspect of Genie I think a lot of people don't know about. Uh, we're going to talk about creating a project and adding profiles to it, editing and formatting, adding photos and documents, collaborating, following, hypertext linking, tagging the project to other projects, finding your personal uh, projects, and ultimately we're going to talk about the Jewish genealogy portal on Genie. Okay. Um, now, how to create a project on Genie. Any user can create a project on Genie. Anybody. It's free. It's part of the pr free uh, service on Genie. Now, Genie is 
a, a company. It's owned by MyHeritage. It does charge money for certain things. You can become what they call a pro user by paying $10 a month, and you get certain added features. You can contact people through search. You can initiate merges. But you don't have to. So you can start out on Genie, and when they ask for money, you can click cancel and go on your merry way and build your tree and work on projects. That's still free. Uh, it takes just a few steps, as I'm going to show you. It's very easy. Do not worry about making mistakes on Genie. Okay? Genie is designed for you to work collaboratively and ultimately to fix mistakes. So just like when you start out to write something in a Word document and it may not be perfect the first time, you can go back and fix it at any time. And that's really one of the great things about Genie. It's never locked in place. You can always fix mistakes. And uh, if, if you're familiar with Wikipedia, Genie projects look, work like pages on Wikipedia. So anybody who collaborates on a project can edit the project page, can do all of the things that you can do, can add things to the project, and you'll, you'll see that. Uh, it may be even easier than Wikipedia. So here's the project dashboard. And the way you get there, when you log into Genie, you have this, see on the top here, this menu. If you click on Research, you'll see projects there. And if you click on projects, you come to this, this whole dashboard that we're seeing right here. Uh, and they, Genie likes to highlight certain projects. This is the global family reunion that A.J. Jacobs is doing next uh, June in New York, where he's invited any, anybody who's connected to him on Genie is going to his family reunion. And he's trying to break the world record for the number of family members at a family reunion, defining family to be anybody who's part of the world family tree on Genie. Uh, he's, he's a great promoter, and I think he's probably going to pull it off. Um, so anyway, some of the other features here. Uh, you can select just your projects. That's the ones you have joined. Or you can look at all projects on Genie. Um, here it's selected on my projects. You see the top one listed here, and there's a long list that goes under this is Jewish Families of Krakow. You see over here recent activity. These are people who have been working 50 minutes before I took the slide, three hours before, etc., on the various projects that I have uh, joined. So you get to see sort of a news feed over here. Uh, you can search for projects in this area here. So you just type in the name. Uh, it's always good before you create a project to check if someone else has already done it before. So if you were thinking, ooh, I want to create a project on Krakow, you type in Krakow first here, and it'll search. Uh, they recently fixed it so that you don't, need, you don't need the accent characters. It'll search correctly if you leave them off. Um, so that works. OK. And then uh, over here, there's the button to start a new project, which is what we're going to talk about. So let me see what the next slide is. There we go. So when you click that Start a New Project button, which you can still see hidden over here, um, this box comes up. This is all you need to do to start a project on Genie. I'm not kidding. This is it. Name of the project, right? Jews from Hotzenplatz, whatever it is, OK? Profiles, you can leave it blank. But if you have some particular ancestor or relative from Hotzenplatz and you want to put it in, you, t you start typing his name, and if it recognizes it as one of your profiles, it'll sort of highlight, and you can start off by putting him there. You can always add him later. So you could leave this one blank. Collaborators, same thing. If there's someone you already know and are connected with on Genie, uh, and you want to have them join automatically, join uh, the project, or be sent a request to join the project, you could type it there. But you can leave that blank also. Um, and then you can write a description. So sometimes I'll write just as little as, this project seeks to collect all of the Jewish families from blank, from Hotzenplatz. So again, that would be type in name, Jewish families from Hotzenplatz, and then this project is collecting everybody from Hotzenplatz. And you pre press this button here, Create Project. You have now created a project on Genie. Okay? That's how easy it is to start. And remember, you can go back any time. I'll show you. You can go back any time and edit and add. That's the whole purpose of these projects is they're collaborative. And everybody, not just you, but everybody connected to this town, interested in this town, is going to be able to take part and add to this project, which is not true on any of the other platforms. OK, let's see if I can get to the next slide there. OK, so here's an example of a project. This is a big project. Matter of fact, it's the biggest project on Genie right now. Uh, one of our, our curators, she's not here at the conference this year, Pam Karp, uh, 
decided to sort of take this over. I started her off, and she's taken it over. You can see they have 30,000 profiles attached to the project. I'll, I'll tell you what that means in a little bit, but that's, that's the most on Genie. They have 93 project collaborators, could be more, uh, but their, their goal is to uh, basically transfer a database that Dan Hirschberg in Irvine, California has developed for all of the Jews in Krakow and transfer that onto Genie because Dan Hirschberg has his own website which prints out family charts, the old-fashioned descendant charts. Uh, and they're not quite old-fashioned. They actually hyperlink to each other a little bit, but they're not as good as Genie. You're not going to see photographs. You're not going to be able to connect to living descendants. Uh, you can't attach documents. You can't edit it. You can't change it. It's not Genie. And so the goal of this project is to bring all of his work over to Genie and have it all on Genie. And they're about halfway through, maybe more. Uh, I'll show you another page. Uh, as we scroll down, it's a huge project, so as you scroll down, you can see the top of it. There's something like, there are well over a thousand families uh, that Dan Hirschberg has identified, and you can see the, they're listing them here, and they've, they've written completed to tell people which ones are finished and which ones are, are still to be worked on. So you can, you can just see that they list the name, they list uh, the last name, a first name with a date, and completed. Now you see that this is blue, you see anywhere it's blue? That's a clickable hypertext link. What that means is you, you take your cursor and you can click on it and it'll take you somewhere else. So in this case, it'll take you to the page for David Obelis, born 1754, right? This one will take you to Abraham Adler, born 1803. And you go to the profile page, which is a standard Genie page. If you're on Genie, you'll understand it immediately uh, for that person. And that's how you can enter the tree because from that person's page, you can then click on his tree and see all the trees, see all the descendants, etc. So they take the, the top of the tree and they list it like this. And that's how you can have access. The way this works is, let's say you're working on some of the entry, data entry, and you're working on the Allerhand family down here. And in the Allerhand family, there may be someone who married uh, an Alexandrowitz. Okay? So you're working on the Allerhans, and you're adding the information in, and then you get another, another surname comes up in the chart. So how do you find it? How do you find that family, right? You go back to the project page, and now you go to Alexanderwitz, and you find this person on the Alexanderwitz tree, and then you can merge them together, and, that, and the trees become sort of seamlessly connected. You'll see it more as we go on. Okay. Uh, one of the other aspects of projects on Genie is that you can add photographs and documents. It's super easy. Again, all you have to do is click on add photos or add documents. Documents can be uh, also in, in picture form or they can be PDFs or Word documents uh, and, and things like that. So whenever you collect information about your town that you're working on, it's very easy to add them to the project and then everybody on Genie can use it. And that's the whole point of this, is that everybody is working together. Um, Okay, so how to join a project, right? There's something, a project may be already in existence, you want to join it, how do you do that? You find the project, I told you how to do that from the dashboard, you search for it, you go to the project page, and then over on, on this right side you see actions and follow. So you can follow a project, that means you'll get notice of discussions and things that happen in the project in your news feed on your homepage in Genie. Uh, or you can click Actions here and you can join the project. That's joining as a collaborator, as a member of the project. And once you're a collaborator, you can edit the project, you can add profiles to the project, you can do anything that any other collaborator can do on the project. Now, when you ask to join a project, a message is sent to all the existing collaborators on the project whether they want to allow you to be a collaborator. So it's not completely a free-for-all. But I think you'll find that uh, you get accepted within minutes or, you know, in some smaller projects, it may take a few hours or a day. But uh, it's pretty much automatic that you get added as a collaborator on a project. And uh, I haven't heard of any, any problems with that, actually. Uh, you, can, you can then add profiles this way, right? You can add collaborators just like you could at the, at the very, very beginning. Okay, uh, let's see. Discussions. So 
on projects, I don't know if we saw that there. Uh, at the top here, you said see view discussions. So if you click on that, you can see discussions. You can start a discussion related to the project, and that will then be sent to the news feed of all the collaborators in the project. So uh, you can see a number. There are many, many discussions that we've had about the Krakow project. You can, you know, tied myself to two families, Ehrensfrau and other families. Right, Spitzberg and Werner, right? People who have questions, who want to tell people that they're working in a particular era, area, they start discussions. Some discussions are very active, like how to complete it. Others, less active, that type of thing. But it's another way of having this sort of public collaboration on the project. Um, editing the project, okay. So again, if you go back to the project page, you see at the top here where it says edit, okay? Um, history, by the way, will we'll show you the history of all the revisions. So if someone makes a bad edit, you can go back and erase it, uh, which is sometimes nice. Anyway, so when you press edit, this comes up. You can edit the name. I do this all the time, by the way, because I'll type in uh, a name of a town and then realize there should be 17 different accents. So I'll cut and paste those later after I've created it. I, I even edit the town name. Um, I think only the creator of the project can edit the town name. That's one of the few restrictions. Uh, but see, here you see the beginnings of, of this project. Now you'll see the three apostrophes around Krakow. That's going to make it bold. Uh, so there's certain little rules on how to make this sort of look a little bit less plain. And those you find under formatting help over here. And I'm not going to talk to, about them in much detail because I'll tell you how I learned it. I learned by copying. Okay? I saw a project I liked. I said, how did they do that? Right? How did they get larger fonts? How did they indent? How did they get the number list? And I, I joined the project. I clicked edit. And I looked and saw exactly what they did, what little characters they added in. And I just cut and paste and copied. Okay, into, into it. And, but if you wanted to see it, you click on formatting help and it'll give you a whole, whoops, a whole list of them right there. And here's, I think, a, a description of some of them. But it, you don't need to do this. It's just saying you can do it, okay? You can make these a little bit more fancy than plain, okay? Bolding and indenting and anyway, all these things. Okay, so how do you add a public profile to a project? Again, projects are for public profiles, not private. Let me repeat that. You cannot add a living person to a project. For me, this is sometimes a problem. I've set up projects uh, related to the Holocaust, where we have projects for each concentration camp. I can't, if there's a living survivor who's on Genie, I can't add that person's profile to the project. I can add them as a collaborator, but not tag them to the project as a, as a uh, project profile. Uh, but for better or worse, that's the rule, because they want projects to be just about public profiles. So these are mainly for historical projects. And uh, here's my grandfather. And uh, I'm going to show you over here on the right. This is a standard profile page. Over here on the right is, see that button called Actions? That's a good button to know, because it has a lot of things that you might wonder, how can I do that? They're usually under Actions. OK. Uh, and somewhere down here is add to project. See that one down there? So on any profile page, right, if you have an ancestor or relative you want to add to a particular project that you have joined, you go to the project, you go to the profile page, click on actions, add to project, and you get a, a menu like this. He's already a member of, of some projects. You type in the title of the project here. I'm typing in you see how I see COMPO. I started to type in composer. I come up with four other projects that he could be part of that start with COMPO, right? And you just select one of those, and it adds the person to the project. So it's very relatively easy. OK, so let's say you've started your project. What are we doing on time here? Not too bad. You've started your project. And now what do you do? How do you find collaborators, right? Because the whole idea is not to do this yourself. Right? That's at least my idea, is I don't want to do all the work myself. So I want to find collaborators. There's, there are three good ways of finding collaborators and other profiles to add to the project, in my view. One is that MyHeritage, uh, which owns Genie, has a search capability. So if you're on MyHeritage, you can search uh, just for town name. 
And unfortunately, Genie doesn't have this. It's something we've been militating for for a long time. But they haven't added that feature yet, so you have to go over to MyHeritage to do it. Uh, and this is the address that, I, that you can do it, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Uh, Jewish Gen, also on the Jewish Gen Family Finder, you can search for towns and you can find other potential collaborators. Uh, and then here's a, a trick I always use, which is on Google, you can type in the name of the town and then the plus sign site colon genie.com. That will limit your results to pages on Genie. So if you're looking for everybody from a town on Genie, you type in the town name, site genie.com, and you'll get a whole bunch of profiles from that town. They may not be Jewish ones, right? But and the same with when you search on MyHeritage. It may not be Jewish ones you get, but they're at least going to have some, something to do with that town. So here again is the MyHeritage uh, search engine. If you go under research, and the, you have to go to the family trees, and you have to select, it's on the right on the previous page, just the Genie World Family Tree. So it'll search just the Genie Tree. You type in on birthplace here, whatever town you want, click search, and it'll show you anybody born in that town in the Genie World Family Tree, even though you're searching on MyHeritage, because the two companies are connected. And here's the results, for example, of, of doing uh, Krakow, right? You get 7,000 results on Genie uh, that they've identified there where it's typed in. And it's Laser Elters and Francisca Himmelblau. You get a lot of Jewish people when you search in places where Jews lived. OK, here's Jewish Gen Family Finder, for those of you who haven't used that a lot. Uh, it's a great place to find collaborators. You search the database. Uh, it comes up like this. And you can search just the town name here. And once you find it, you go to the next page. And you get a list of everybody who is uh, searching Krakow here. There are 1,722 researchers who have registered with the Jewish Gen Family Finder. Remember, only 92 people on Genie have built, are working on this project. There are another 1,630 people who are obliviously going their own way, building their own little tree, and not connected with this other project. That's, that's I think, the big problem that we have. Um, but anyway, then the, uh, uh, I wanted to now segue finally to the Jewish genealogy portal on Genie. This is a project I started off just a little over a year ago. Okay? And it is now enormous. It is a directory of all Jewish-related projects on Genie. Anybody can join this project. And we have uh, 780 project collaborators on, on this particular directory project. Uh, they can edit. Each of those 780 people can edit and add new projects to this page. So it be, has become a very long, large page. If I can get out of here, well, you know what? I'll show it to you later. But I have it online here so we can scroll through it. And you can see it's organized a little bit like Jewish Gen by sort of geographic areas, some topic areas like uh, biblical or Holocaust or, or rabbis. But mainly it's geographic. So if you're looking for Belarus, you go down to Belarus. And you can find all the projects related to Belarus. It's very, very useful. Um, so here's some examples. I promised in my description of this talk that I would talk about a few examples. I set up a project for Frankfurt. I'm, my family's tangentially connected, uh, but there's a ton of information on Frankfurt, very good records. So I thought, I'll set up an, a, a project. There's something like 625 Jewish families identified in this old book, and I'll set up a pro project. And you know, slowly but surely, we're filling them out. Uh, and uh, most of the major ones are in here. Rothschild is extensively done, for example. And, uh, and if someone's working on any of these other families, they can come and they can complete that portion of the project. And just when it's, when it's highlighted, that means you click on it and it links over to the person who's the top of that uh, family, basically. Um, there is uh, San Francisco. I promised I talked, you know, one of the ways you can get to do a talk at this conference is following the instructions on what they want you to talk about. And one of the things was Jews of the West. So I'm from California, so I set up a project for uh, Jews in California, including Jews in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Here's the one uh, for Jews in San Francisco. It may have been alphabetical at one point, but someone got working on it, and it's not quite alphabetical anymore. Uh, but we found a list of sort of the early Jews in San Francisco. Hard to research San Francisco because they lost a lot of records in the fire and the, after the earthquake. Uh, but anyway, we've, we've identified a lot of the early San Francisco families here, and, uh, and so there's a project for them. Uh, there's Jewish families from Prague. I'm probably most proud of this 
uh, project, 250 old Prague families that I've identified and I work on extensively. It's a long list underneath this, at the bottom of this page. Uh, but here I also describe my method, how I'm working on the project. Uh, this is, I, I do things a little differently in this project. I sort of stitch together people I think are related, even if I'm not sure, because I like to work on them in, in one place. And so I explain why I'm doing that and how I'm doing that here. I also refer people to sources. So I say, you know, you can find sources here and here. Look here for more information. It's, it's a sort of a primer on how to participate in this project at the top of it. Um, here's one from a smaller town. Small town projects, I think, are actually the best, really, because they're the most manageable. Um, here's a small town in Moravia where they had a list uh, in 1929, 1829, a list of all the people who had the right to have a household there. It's something like 60 people, 60 families. Okay? This is not talking about a big community. And slowly but surely, we're identifying each one of these families, linking them to the tree, and then linking them to the project. And there are, I don't know how many people are collaborating. Five people are collaborating on this project so far. Uh, here's another small town, smallish town, Kolodia. The records are better. I, I've managed to, to identify pretty much everybody in this town and connect them up to one project. So if you're researching Kolodia, you're going to want to go to this project page. It'll connect you to all the family trees. Again, that's the difference between this and all of the other platforms, is you go to this project page, not only can you find information below this list, there's a lot of information, but you can connect to every single family tree related to that town. And they're all related to each other. Um, here's an example. So I clicked on, I tried to find one actually that was far away from me. It was hard to find because most of them are very close to my family. Uh, this is Urban Fry I clicked on, so here's how he, how he relates. He's my fourth grade aunt's sister's husband, right? So this would be my ancestor, or whatever, and here's your brother's wife's sister's husband. So this is the real issue here. Remember when I started in the beginning, I said, you know, I made my ancestors all red because all I cared about was my blood relatives. And until I started on Genie, that's all I cared about. I said, you know, life's short. Right? I got enough crazy people in my own family. I don't need to worry about someone else's. That was my philosophy, and that's the philosophy of pretty much everybody who starts out in genealogy because it's overwhelming otherwise. Um, but it's wrong. It's wrong to do that because if someone's important enough to be on my family tree, then that person is important enough that I should know about the people in his or her extended family. Okay, And so if I care about my great-great-great-grandmother's uh, brother, okay, um, then I should care about his wife also. And if I care about his wife, I care about her sister and, his, and her, her husband, right? And you think, that's not really that far away. Who's at the wedding, right, of these, of, of these people? My family, right, and this family, right? Who was at every family event, every holiday, every simcha, right? this family and that family. So I care about the fries. I would love to find the fries, right? And if I, if I put myself in a silo and say, I only care about my blood relatives, they're done by color here, okay? I only care about my blood relatives, I am not going to find out everything about my family if I don't go outside them. And that's why I care about every person in this town. Because every person in this town potentially could have information about my blood relatives. And by the way, they're probably all my blood relatives because uh, I heard someone say before, you know, my family lived for 200 years in this town. No, no, no. You only have records that they lived for 200 years in this town. They lived for 500 years in this town. If you could go back to really when these families got here, every single one is your cousin. Forget about the surnames, okay? These are small villages. Everybody is your cousin. Now, I'm exaggerating, but not much. It's like 80% probably of any, any old town will be blood relatives of you. And by the way, the DNA is proving it, right? So the people who do these DNA tests are showing it, okay? So we're all closely related. Uh, and anyway, this is a good example of why I'm interested in everybody from a particular town. Uh, here's another one from that town, a little, uh, again, sort of two families away. This Abraham Kafka, right? It's just another example of how 
how the things go. And Genie will calculate these relationships. You just click a button. It's, it's great. So anyway, that's, that's why I do it. Let's um, look at the gene Jewish genealogy portal. We have a Facebook page that I started up uh, just a few months ago. Um, it has how many? 692 likes. Oh, 15,000 people have liked the page so far. Um, there are a few of us who post things to this page to let people know about interesting things on Genie. I like to post every day uh, whose birthday it is, right? Um, and I still have to do that for today. But uh, there's another woman, Edna, uh, who posts every day the Yiskor dates of famous rabbis who have died on, on the date. And that's how we keep people sort of informed and interested in, in what's available on Genie. Uh, we also have a group, a Facebook group, which is different than a page. The group is more for discussion. So again, if you have questions, uh, any type of genealogy question, you should join this, this group. We have now uh, how many members? 2,151 members. S they all get notifications. So if you have a tombstone you can't read, if you have a record you can't read, if you have any type of question, you can ask people on this Facebook group. You could also start a discussion on the Genie project that has 780 people, uh, uh, but this is maybe faster. Okay, so what have I learned through collaborating? Everyone, everyone, again, in my ancestral village is related or connected to everyone else in the town. There's literally, it's only a matter of the records, but when I, when I have records available, it's like picking out Whatever, what's the, what's the expression? Picking apples from a barrel. It's easy. You just pick them up and you put them in the right place. Okay? It's just a matter of having the records, but we're all related. We should not limit our genealogy just to blood relatives or people with the same name. Okay? But working together on a collaborative free platform like Genie, we can accomplish much more, much more than working alone. And we've seen this now in the few years that this has started on Genie and with the hundreds of projects that we already have. Uh, if we had more people working, it would be even better. Okay, uh, and here, here I am at the, at the end. You saw me at age 10 and this is what I looked like last night. Uh, so so let, me, uh, let me close there. I can go, um, what I wanted to do, I'm not sure how much, how much time we have. It's four o'clock. When is it supposed to end, do you know? Sorry? 4.30, so we've got plenty of time. Uh, that's my main presentation. I'm going to go out of this, unless anybody has any questions about the PowerPoint, and go on to Genie, and then I can answer questions. I want to show you a little bit more fully what the Jewish genealogy portal looks like and what it has in the next 30 minutes. So from now on, you can ask any questions. Just raise your hand. So I'm going to click. Oh, there's a microphone back there, yeah. So anyway, thank you for all, all for listening there. Do you, think this, do you think this eliminates some of the things that Jewish Jen is trying to do with their discussion groups and with things like the Kahila pages that they, that they make? I, I, I think it all works together. I, I find um, that, that the, the question is whether this will sort of interfere with or eliminate the need for, for other types of uh, platforms like what's on Jewish Gen with Kahila Links. Uh, I find it more useful because it's more flexible. Um, I think the Wikipedia open source type model ends up being superior over the long haul, and I think Wikipedia has proven that. You know, initially when Wikipedia started out, everyone said, oh, you can't trust Wikipedia. Anybody can change it. It's unreliable. Who knows where the information comes from? Uh, and in the beginning, that was uh, very often the case. But over time, the people who care most take care of what they care about, and it gets better and better and better. The people who are interfering back off. Um, like Wikipedia, Genie has curators. I'm one of them. If there are problems, we get rid of the problem people. We lock profiles. We have lots of ways of, of maintaining the integrity of the tree. And I, so I think over time, uh, the, genie, the genie sort of open source model is the way that all genealogy is going to go. Now, does that mean you don't need books? You don't need web pages like the, the Shtetl links, or sorry, Kahila links, uh, Yiskor book, um, Jewish virtual library? No, no, I think those all can still exist for people who want to have 
the authorship and control of a particular product, right? I think that's good. And it gives you a snapshot in time of what, what we knew, right, at the time that the person made that page. Uh, but it's, it's more cumbersome to update. It's not collaborative. Uh, and, and I think the Genie model has, at least from my perspective, a better chance of surviving in the long run and being, uh, being more, um, uh, more productive. And again, the, the number one advantage for me is that you can link to the family trees in the same platform. So uh, if the other platforms allowed that, I think, I think uh, you know, then there would, be, there would be a reason to stay on those platforms. But I think for now, uh, Genie is really the, the best. Okay. Um, any other questions? No? I'm going to go switch over if I can do that. So here's the Jewish genealogy portal. And again, I structured this. Uh, very similar to, to Jewish Gen. I even say that in the, in the description there, uh, because I figured, you know, Jewish Gen, and I'm on the board of Jewish Gen, is the internet portal for Jewish genealogy worldwide, right? And they've set the standard for how we should sort of organize our Jewish genealogy, and I think the, this portal should reflect that. So I organized it the same way. Let me see if I can use this computer here to go scroll down. So after a brief introduction and some links, uh, to, uh, to various other, like the conference page. Uh, first, we have historical projects. So we have the biblical, let me stop moving so you can look at it. Um, biblical tree. So there are people, there are even curators, all they care about is the biblical tree because, I don't know if you know this, but there are other religions besides Judaism, and they have actual actually different books that say different things about the people in our books. Different marriages, different kids. Uh, and so it becomes a little bit of a conflict. And th this is, Jeannie has had to work out these type of really sort of, in a way, serious, in a way, fantasy conflicts. Uh, and that's how we know we can solve smaller problems like we all have in, in, with living people today. If we can figure out a way to make you know, the Muslim tree happy and the Jewish tree happy and the Christian tree happy and the Druid tree happy and the Norse mythology tree happy, right, then we probably can make your family happy also. Um, so, so the biblical tree is there, and if you connect back to Adam, as I supposedly do, you can find your relationship. Uh, so through that. Um, the Holocaust is there. there See, on a lot of these, you'll see just one link there. You see Holocaust, the final solution. This is a directory, so it just goes to, I'll click on it, and I'll show you what it looks like, I think. Okay. It goes to yet another project page, which is itself a directory. Extermination camps, concentration camps, transit camps, ghettos. Each one has its own project. Okay. And you can attach pro public profiles to any of these projects. So the Warsaw Ghetto uh, and the Auschwitz projects are some of the largest. They have 10,000 profiles attached to them. Uh, but, but you see how, how the portal works. It just links you to that top level. Uh, there's several rabbinic projects. If you start down that road, you'll never come back out. Um, okay, let me see if I can scroll down here. Sephardic projects. Now we get to the geographic ones, so North and South America. Um, Kevin Hunnett, who's sitting right here, is one of the curators on Genie. He helped uh, finish up the First American Jewish Families Project, which was a, a project to take Malcolm Stern's famous book on early American Jewish families and make sure all of them are on Genie. So that project, again, is basically an index of Malcolm Stern's book. And if you're, you're connected to a family in that book, your tree is on Genie, and you can access it that way. Uh, but we have a number of different American projects. Uh, and then there's an umbrella within that that is um, Jews of the United States. So what do you think is going to be under there? What do you think? A list of all the states, right? So here you can click on any state. I was working on Oregon. You want to see what Oregon looks like? Barbara Hershey was somewhere here. Okay, so you click on Oregon, and there is an umbrella project for the Jews of Oregon. And it has a big description of Jews of Oregon and some, some profiles highlighted there of famous Jews in Oregon, Mark Rothko and people like that. Okay, so you can see how, how, this, how this works as sort of a, a 
directory structure, each time you get to an individual, then you can go back to the, you get back to the Gini family trees. So now we're out of America. You can see we start with Eastern Europe, and you'll see the differences. So Belarus has been sort of active lately, and people have been adding these sort of small, smaller projects, family projects, um, town projects, etc. At some point, this gets too big, and we'll just do one, one umbrella project. They'll say the Jews of Belarus, and we'll p dump these over onto the Jews of Belarus page so it's not sort of clouding up the whole uh, portal here, um, just like we have with Bessarabia or Estonia here. We're just one link. Galicia, Latvia. So some areas are more active than others, and you just have to explore. Uh, you know, Austria, Czech, which is where my area is from, you don't, you don't see a lot, but there's a ton underneath, right? So Jewish communities in Bohemia and Moravia, we have hundreds of projects listed there. Uh, and anyway, so it goes down. Let's go some more here. Central Europe, right? Southern Europe, Middle East, North Africa, we're missing uh, projects on. So you see some of it is developed. It's only been a little over a year. Some of it's developed, some of it's not developed. It's really waiting for people to come in and say, I want to be the person that starts up this project. I want to invite the people. I want to start it up and see where it goes. And sometimes it takes off, sometimes it doesn't. You just don't know, and it doesn't matter so much. You just need to try. And then we have certain notable family projects here. Unbroken Chain by Neil Rosenstein has an index of the whole Unbroken Chain linked up. Um, it's not quite finished yet, but it's, it will be. Uh, a lot of these sort of famous Rashi, Tursky, Shaltiel, et cetera. Uh, so you can, you can find some of those larger family projects listed at the bottom here. And that's the Jewish genealogy portal. It's boring. It's just a directory. Okay? But it's a collaborative directory made by 800 different users. Right? That we all work together, edit it, add information. We add the things below. Um, and we're always looking for more people to, to help out. Okay, do we have any other questions? I, I, I had one other thing I could do if we have a few minutes, and that is start up a project for someone and show how, it, how it's done. Okay, so any, anybody have a town? Anybody? No one's here researching a town? Let's see. Okay, you're going to have to spell it. Where is it from? It's in Volinia. Volinia. Should we search and see if it's, if it's there? Probably not. I don't, let's pretend it's not there just for, for our purposes. But in theory, you could search. If I go back to the projects dashboard here, Can you pick a, a, a town that I can spell? <laughs> give, me an, give me any name. L-A-B-U-N. OK, so let's, let's first search and see if Labun is. There's none. So it says, there are currently no genealogy product, projects. Create a new one? Yes. OK, so we're going to go to name here. OK, whoops, I said Z there. Sorry, Jewish families. From Labun. Where is it? In what country? Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay. And we'll say this project seeks to collect all of the Jewish families from Labun. From, I usually say, the town of Labun, Ukraine. Okay. Bingo. Create project. Okay. You now have a, a Labun project. Now it's sort of empty, right? So uh, is there someone not? Do you have a, a, a tree on Genie with a person on Genie from Labun? So who's that person? Yeah. Let's see if we can find Avram Garber. Let's see. It's like a game show now. Yeah. That's one of the issues you have to actually spell things right, otherwise it's harder to find. But remember, we're looking for a specific specific profile. OK, there's a few of them. Do you see which ones? There are only 33 Abraham Garbers. Huh? Do you know who is, uh, who is he married to or father of or parent of? Uh, uh, married to Dora. Uh, wait, what's, who's, the, who's the manager? Married to Dora? Whoops. Dora. 
No. So maybe on the next page. This, where? where? Uh, that one. That one. Okay. I don't see Dora. I see husband of Anna. But anyway. Okay. See, this is a good example of what actually happens on Genie. Everybody thinks it's wrong, and then it is. It's right? Okay, so this guy's from Laban. So let me see if I can add him. So I go to Actions, Add to Project. Let's see if it works. Whatever. It can always take him out. Okay, sorry. And I'm going to, let's hope this works. L-A-B-U-N. There it is. Okay, let me see. The main problem for me is I don't use the PCs. Okay, done. So, so <laughs> I'll let her do that. But anyway, uh, let me show you down here. So you see on this guy, on Abraham's page now, there's a place where the project now appears. Can you see that here? See that? So anytime you attach a profile to a project, a link to the project page shows up on the profile, which is very useful. So if someone finds this profile, right, because they're searching for him or for love, they might search it either way, they can click on that and they're taken back to, to here. Now you can, add a, you can add yourself, right, you can join, you can add a photo, you can add more information, you can invite collaborators, all those things that I talked to. It's not hard, it's not hard. The hard part is getting other people to, to work on this with you. Uh, that's the that's the difficult part. Yes. No, no. Ask a question. Um, so we need to then, if I want to add additional people, I have to do it by hand. I go to, go to the, the profile for each person and add them individually. Right, right. Um, but you don't have to add everybody, right? So, sorry. Oh, I have to join. Yeah, I have to invite her to the project. Okay, so I'll do that. So on the project page, it shows that I'm follower, collaborator, and it shows this profile, Abraham Garber, do you see that? Actually, oh good, yeah, because it shows where the arrow is for you guys too, okay. So I can go back to that, and let's invite you to the project. Um, I click on Emily, the manager here. Thank you everybody for helping me out. Okay, and under, there are two ways of doing this, sometimes. One is, See here, invite to project. See that, where I'm pointing? Um, the other is up at actions. Okay, so either actions, invite to project, or down on the project page. Um, okay, and it's Laban, right? Whoops, L-A-B-U-N. Okay, and you will get an invitation to join the Laban project, okay? Um, it's that easy, and so if you find other profiles on Genie, what I do is I'll try to add, you know, ask to add them to the project, and I'll go to the manager, and I'll go to the manager and, and invite the manager to the project also, because anybody who adds in a profile that says Lapin might be interested in, in that. I mean, I, if you want, we can try to, um, let me see if I can get to Google. Yeah. Right. You can add that in the title. You can change the title, or you can in the description. You can write all the different spelling. And that, yeah, yeah. So if I do my trick and do Laboon plus site, I have no idea if this will work, but because Laboon is sort of a weird name, but so it's also a last name. So that's a little problematic because you're going to get all the people named Laboon um, first, probably. So let's go in the middle here. Huh? Should I add Ukraine? Okay, let's see. It's a good idea. Like that, you think? Ah, Feige Rosenblatt, is that one of yours? Sounds, sound, sounds Jewish. Yeah, well, actually, I was trying to find another person who's from that town. Okay, see, so now you found another one, right? So you go to Actions, um, Add to Project, Laban, okay, done. Okay, and then I'll click on Anna. So, okay, is it zero work? I didn't say it's zero work, okay? But it's not a lot of work to do this. And 
once you once you get going, you can actually do it pretty fast if you actually know which computer you're working on, which I don't here. Okay? So question, yes. So, so when you go to the project page, I'm not sure these get added automatically because I don't know, it, only if I was a collaborator of the person already would it get added automatically, I think. Did it get automated? Yeah, I think. Um, but uh, the public one should be added actually. So let's see. No. Is that right? No. Um, the. Uh, from the project page, whoops, sorry, this would be the project page over here, I think. Here's Abraham, where's the project page? There, there it is, right? So from the project page, you can um, take a look at all the collaborators. Do you see down here? Collaborators, followers, and then the profiles. So you can go to this, you can actually click on view all and you could see all of the profiles that we've added and you can view their tree like that. Um, whether you can make changes on the tree depends on the privacy settings. I can make changes because I'm a curator. You might not be able to make changes, so it's a little hard for me to test that from here. But uh, in general, all deceased people on Genie are public. Automatically, all, all living are private. There's still some deceased that are private, I think, if they're within someone's family group. But uh, in general, all deceased are public. Every living person is private. In order to edit a private profile, you have to get permission uh, from, from the manager, have that person add you to, the, to his family group. Um, so you, there are ways of editing private profiles, but you have to be given permission to do that. Whereas for the public profiles, uh, you don't necessarily have to have permission if it's one of these historic profiles. Any other questions? Do they or... Oh, you can have tons of sources on Genie. Um, so if, if uh, let's see if I can, I can show you, but... You... Sorry, do you, you want to go back? You're on that on that one. So it just I don't I'm not as familiar. Which family you're interested in? Let's see. Okay. I mean, so you can see it's it. This is a big project. I said it's the biggest one. We. I mean, the good thing about having these big town, the large city projects, is that if you live anywhere in the Krakow area, you sent someone to Krakow, right? Someone went there to be a lawyer, a doctor, go into business. So if you're in any little tiny shuttle around Krakow, you also have relatives in Krakow. So it's a good place to, uh, to find people. So here we've got Wolf. I don't know whether this is overly sourced. Um, it may not be. It may have references here at the top one. It references um, Dan. Okay, so there's the source and you're there like that. Now, if, you, if, if I go back to like the Vienna projects um, or Prague, uh, you'll see how I do things there. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Jewish families from Prague. And um, let's see if I pick the right family. I don't want to show the wrong family, but let's see if I can get into, um, I don't know, Eliezer Fleckelis, because he's a famous rabbi, I think. There he is, right? Um, so you have information about him in the about section here. Um, you may or may not have sources or documents, but if there are any, they'll be listed here. Media sometimes has, see over here on documents, see these Jewish encyclopedia articles. Um, you can also attach sources to events. Um, there's, there's like, See, here's the thing. Genealogists have a lot of different ways they like to do things. And Genie is trying to be flexible and allow a lot of them. So if you're the type of person who likes to attach a document to a particular source, you can do that on Genie. But you don't have to, right? So there's many different ways. Um, sometimes I attach sources in the timeline um, 
not on this one apparently, but sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do that there. There's just many different ways of, of doing sources. And then you can, of course, look at the tree and you'll find uh, source, you'll find pictures there and sources. So like if you look at his granddaughter here, you'll see um, that, that there's obviously a source there because it's in the, there's a photograph of it used as a picture, right? That type of thing, and there's her, her there's her record. It's probably in the media section here. So whether it's attached to a source is one I did a long time ago. It may not have a source on it, but it may. So who knows? Someone, someone else added it, Stefan Buchinger. So he didn't add a source. So it's, you're working collaboratively. Some people add a lot of sources. Other people don't. Um, I sort of tend to call it decorating the tree. Uh, it's, it's, nice. it's, it's important to have sources. It's great to have sources. It helps other people check what you've done, find what you've done, learn more. Uh, I don't find it 100% necessary, to be honest, to have every possible source for every single event in a person's family. I think that can get carried away and become not genealogy anymore and more sort of obsessive biography. Uh, I mean, just to give you an example, my grandfather's very famous, okay? So if I, I could go through basically every day of his life and add sources, because we have like 30,000 letters in a database online for him. And so I could source him till I'm dead and never do anything else. Uh, but at a certain point, I learned that I, I really am more interested in the structure of the tree than in decorating the tree. And so my focus has been more to build the tree and make the connections between the families, uh, especially more distantly related families to mine. And then with the hope that someone else will come along, follow the little trail of crumbs that I've left behind with the pictures, with the links, and things like that, and then fill out and decorate their, their own individual branches. That's just my personal view of sources. But other people feel very strongly in other directions, and Genie can accommodate all, all of that. Uh, so you'll find completely unsourced trees on Genie, and you'll find trees where there are hundreds of sources on one profile. And it just depends on who wants to do the work uh, and, and do that. Um, the good thing is once it's on Genie, it's in, a, in the most publicly available platform. right? None of the other uh, platforms for building your family tree, except if you have your own website, are searchable on Google, for example. So you won't find Family Tree of the Jewish People, I don't believe. Uh, you will not find ancestry trees or my heritage trees uh, on by doing a Google search. But if you have some fourth cousin uh, who likes to Google, uh, and uh, you won't find them if your tree is on those platforms, you will find it here. And that's why I think this is going to succeed and be really the the uh, the sort of base core tree for Jewish genealogy going forward. Uh, if there are no other questions, I think we can finish up. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I really enjoyed finally talking about this subject. I obviously feel very strongly about it. Have a great conference. Thank you, everyone.